again in my video. Boom! Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Boring Land! Oh, Come just on. kidding. Blasphemer! We know all things. <laughs> all right welcome back to boring reviews boring land nick here <laughs> game and we are here today looking at and reviewing the film mari karnika now i don't know if i say that right i never have confidence but this is the queen of john z and this is a film the first film I believe that we've seen and reviewed that stars the superstar Kangana Renat. And she plays our lead role of Manu or Lakshmi Bai, whatever you want to call her. She's got several names in the movie. And, you know, I thought it was interesting because I knew the name Kangana um, beforehand. We did the trailer reaction. There was a lot of excitement for it. Right. I did not know that she was one of the directors as far as the credit for directing this film, too. And I did a little research. How did that happen? The original director, for whatever reason, um, wasn't doing the reshoots and some other things. So she stepped up and she got credit for doing that. So I got different kind of setup here. If you see my eyes go in different places, I got a, a webcam kind of behind my computer. I usually use a webcam on my computer, but it's garbage. So if you see my eyes going back and forth, I'm trying to get used to where the camera is at. <laughs> but um, we are excited to review this. We hope you are excited as well. I was told many many times in the comment section of our trailer reaction that this historical figure and that's what she is a historical figure is one that is taught and learned by you know all indian children in school right. so it kind of got me thinking of like here in the states a comparable to like abraham lincoln or martin luther king or right. george washington something like that that everybody learns about christopher columbus right. and so i thought that was really cool when we watched the movie when i watched the movie and then you watched it I uh, I was thinking to myself, you know, how much of this is accurate? So we'll get to that later on. But let's go ahead and jump into this movie. Do you want to try just an abbreviated synopsis for the folks today? <laughs> abbreviated? What are you doing to me? All right, all right. So, <laughs> <laughs> Mary Kanika, right? Uh, see, I think I butchered it as well. But oh, it's not pretty good to me. <laughs> the story uh, basically begins with this uh, girl who's born uh, to this father. Her mother ends up passing away. Dad raises her on his own. And she grows up to become a very fierce warrior, very independent woman, very, you know, um, outspoken woman. And during the British occupation of India, you know, kingdom by kingdom, they're either going down or uh, 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 making allegiances with Britain. And this one kingdom, I can, I can I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation, but is it, is it Janai? Uh, I don't know which one you're talking about, so let me look it up. But uh, she, you keep queen, going, Queen of Janai. I think it, it, it's Janai, but in any event, um. Just by happenstance, by, just by chance, one day, uh, one of the elders, one of the wise men is out and he's in this neighboring kingdom and he sees this girl who's fierce. There's this really cool shot early in the film where there's a tiger there in the fields and the other men, everybody's panicking. Oh, there's a tiger, there's a tiger. And she's super calm. She's got her bow and arrow and the tiger's actually going to attack a, a, a lamb or something to that effect, a goat. So she shoots the tiger through the neck with the with the arrow, and then the tiger gets up, like shakes it off, and starts charging at her. She stands there, does not budge. All the dudes behind her are like, "Oh, let's get out of here! Tiger's coming!" And this guy's up, this this elder from the other um or advisor, I should say, from the other kingdom, just watching this. And the tiger actually ends up jumping at her, but then he just passes out right in front of her. She actually shot, shot him with like a tranquilizing arrow because she didn't want to kill him. They even asked, why, why did you want to kill it? She's like, why would I kill it? My, my intention was never to kill it. It was just to uh, save the livestock, which is what you find out what she was doing because the tiger had been eating all the livestock from the people from that village. So right away, you find out the kind of metal this woman has. So she tells him, you know, capture it now that it's passed out, you know, uh, take it deep in the jungle. In any event... This elder goes back to his um, kingdom and tells his queen, whose uh, son is not married, like, listen, this is going to be the woman to, to to save this kingdom. You know, you we finally found because uh, they needed to have an heir. He, the, the king needed to produce an heir. And we finally found the woman that's going to produce the heir for our kingdom. So 
to make a long story short, they introduce her, but it, immediately she's doing things that aren't really queen like. She's riding the wild horse nobody can tame, and she's very outspoken. And at one point, uh, they end up getting married, and the British officers come in. And they're just very disrespectful. Everybody is used to bowing their heads or bowing their eyes. And she doesn't do it. She's like, I'm not going to bow to anyone. So this British officer that really takes it up on her, like, oh, yeah, you will bow to me or whatnot. She said, we'll see, basically, and leaves. Uh, um, bottom line is all these kingdoms are either going to eventually pledge allegiance to England or they're going to go to war with England. So they're trying to stave that off. Unfortunately, the the British are, you know, have like a huge, huge army. I think they said 60,000 uh, people. I did not know, or maybe you caught this, it was lo lo lost in translation. The king and, well, I went ahead of myself. She has the heir. She has the baby. Everybody rejoices. So, uh, uh, England doesn't want to come because it's on a Sunday, but she's like, well, you guys did this on a Sunday. You guys did that on a Sunday. She starts naming all these histor historical things they did. Oh, uh, it wasn't the queen's birthday on a Sunday. So why wouldn't you be here to honor my son? So they go and honor the son. The soldiers go reluctantly and honor the son along with the entire kingdom. That's the heir to the kingdom. And then right after the celebration, the son dies. He passes away. And I don't know, did you get the impression that they were poisoned? Because the dad also became ill at the same time. Yeah, so that's a great question because I thought something very similar because you had the conversation with the guy who was the captain from England right. and you had the guy who wanted to be the heir that was like the cousin or whatever he was. He wasn't direct in line having that conversation about, you know, how so sometimes accidents just happen, tragedies just happen. Right. So, and, you know, you have the husband who also has his own issue, tuberculosis, whatever he's got going on. Um, so, you think that, okay, maybe natural causes, but definitely with the baby, with the son, it's implied that that's going to happen, but they never really flesh that out too much. So after her son dies and the husband uh, falls ill, it's time to find another uh, a successor, and it's going to be this cousin of hers who or actually this cousin of the, uh, of the kings who's very ambitious, and it's later revealed that he's a traitor. He's a traitor to the throne, and he's a... Uh, conspiring with the British soldier, soldiers, excuse me. Um, in any event, right at the time when they're about to name his son the heir, uh, the cousin son, I should say, the heir, uh, a little boy comes up to her and calls her mommy. And just out of nowhere, she just feels this uh, a benevolent love. I can't, you know, this connection to the boy. So they named that boy the heir, which makes the cousin very, very upset. And the cousin all of a sudden, you know, starts uh, making all kinds of accusations, how it was a setup or whatnot. And he's banished from the kingdom. In any event, after this happens, the British are not happy because they thought that with the cousin there it was going to be easier to go ahead and take, um, and take over the kingdom. So it, um, they, they they try to find a way around it. So what they do is that they claim that the land or or, or is theirs uh, is Britain's. So they take over the palace. So she gracefully says, "Okay, you want to take the palace? Go ahead." She leaves the people. She said, "Janai isn't a, a palace. It's, it's it's a people. I'm queen of the people." And uh, you know, there's a lot of character building that I missed on. Where, like earlier when she's in the village with the people, and you know, uh, uh, she's showing them. That, uh, like, for instance, the British had taken their livestock, taken their cats because they wanted to eat steak or whatnot. And she goes back to the British uh, camp, says, no, all these are under the king's protection. So you're going to release all these animals. She takes the cat back to the people. So the people genuinely love her. Um, to make a long story short, the British are trying to find a way to, to, to antagonize her. To get, you know, they take the palace. Uh, she ends up going to another village and now they're trying to look for her. And there's this, I wouldn't say rogue, but there's this other group of soldiers uh, there that. Um, they're just in a different place. They're just in a different place, right? Ga the, Garawar the, or something like that. Right, right, right. So they end up getting the castle back for her. She starts helping and preparing for this war. She trains even the women to fight, which was unheard of. The men are turning to uh, are ready to fight, and they actually stave off England's uh, army for a, a good bit there. British the, the Brit uh, British army, I should say, for a good bit. However, the cousin 
the the traitor shows them the weakness to get inside into the palace. Inside information. Inside information. So they end up blowing the walls of the uh, of the fort, getting in, and every I mean everybody dies for the most part. Everybody dies. She's able to escape. Um, with a, a few other of her uh, loyal people are able to escape, but for the most part, everybody dies. So she goes to a neighboring um, country, or not country, but a neighboring uh, a kingdom who has already basically pledged allegiance to 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 Brit to the British, and she basically takes over the kingdom. She goes over there and is like, "Look, do you guys want to live under this British rule, British tyranny?" So the king is assuming that his soldiers are going to kill her, and they all lay down their arms and let her come in and basically take over that he's kingdom. A, he's a big old fat wuss, so he's like, "Yeah, you can basically have it. I don't want any troubles." Yeah, he doesn't <laughs> want no parts of it. Um, they bring the British bring in this special soldier who's like uh, you know won all these battles and he's great at um uh uh what was it at planning I should say and she's also very good at planning as well militarily so they end up having a battle and the British have like sixty thousand to their twenty thousand you know um eventually in the end uh which kind of like hit me for a stone. You know what I mean? Like that's one of the things when we're watching these films and we don't know the backstory, we don't know the history, you expect it for her to clip to be the victor, right? You expect it for her to like lead the nation, but no, she's actually ends up falling in the battlefield. But before they can behead her because the British wanted to behead her and use her head to show, you know, to, to, to show everyone what happens and make it a, a, like like a symbol, she actually and her body feels she's dying, and there's gunpowder on the floor that's already ignited. So she walks into the flames right away. I thought of a Padma Mavat, like wow, like that's got to be a painful way to go. And she did it with a smile on her face. I know this is not as good as Nick's uh, quick reactions, people, but I tried my or, or reviews, but I tried my best. But that's the the story in a nutshell. Now we gloss over a couple little things here and there, but um. Let me know if you think I missed any important parts. No, nah, you went over some good stuff. So I think this this the place you're trying to say is John C. Um, John Denai C. was throwing me off a little bit. Yeah, John C. is that place. Um, the beginning part with the tiger, I thought was when the tiger was coming to attack her with the arrow already inside the tiger. I was like, oh, here we go. This is gonna be over the top. She's gonna bust out her sword and fight this tiger. And I'm like, please, no, don't start the movie this way. And I was pleasantly surprised that that wasn't it. There was thought to it. Like you said, the tranquilizer dart slowed him down she knew it just a matter of time before it took its effect i thought that was a nice pleasant surprise and for me after that moment going in i kind of took a breath and i was like okay because war movies can go so bad i don't care if it's indian or american or british doesn't matter what war movies can be either super epic or really really bad and sometimes in between and so i was just like oh man what's going on but as the movie got kept going on it just kept impressing me more and more and it was it was great. It was very heavy on the Lakshmi character. It, we get a lot of her. Um, but one review said it best when they said the other minor characters don't get as much development besides a few here and there. But that's okay because I thought Kangana did a great job of infusing the spirit of uh, the Queen of Jhansi in this character. Again, like we said, this character is very well known even still today. And so it's got to be a huge task that she put on. But as this movie was going on, I was just very, very intrigued. I was very interested. I was very engaged. I watched it in one sit through. And for me, war films, war films are probably my least favorite genre. I have a few that I absolutely love, like Gettysburg or Hacksaw Ridge or um, Wyatt Earp and stuff like that. That's more of a Western. But usually they're long. Even like Lord of the Rings, which I love. Sometimes I can't see watching one sitting because there's just so much going on. But this film was very easy to watch, and, and I love that about it. The action scenes were fantastic. The only problem with the action scenes and the fighting scenes, I think, was in that last battle where she was at um, Gwaliar. I know I'm saying that wrong, but that place where the king was a wuss and he stepped down. Some of those action scenes were so out of place with like the, the green screen, the black, it, or the back it was like extra black. I'm not sure if you caught that too. And it just seemed very, very VFX in that last battle in some of those like um, – you know, those spotlight shots of her. I thought, you know, man, this girl is violent. She was going off with her sword on yes. some of those British soldiers. I mean, we got several headshots. And then that one that slices right down the middle. Of her head, I'm like, Ooh. oh, you know, so many bad jokes. He's going to have a splitting headache. 
or like from Austin <laughs> Powers. You don't get ahead in life that way. <laughs> but <laughs> that that was brutal. There was some awesome shots, and like you said, there was the uh, the women empowerment stuff. Where you know we don't care what kind of soldier it is. We're gonna train the women, the men, the um, teenagers, whatever. We're gonna make everyone a soldier because we need to protect this land. They did great by infusing both genders, but it was not ever over the top. Our main character is a female a heroine, which you know we're used to these days because we get so many great, powerful female characters that it's not like it was five years ago where it's like, oh, how is this going to work? But it was never like hit over the head for us. And right. they never had to, in my opinion, bring down the, down the male characters to make her seem better. Like her, her husband, the king that was alive for a short time, I thought he was a great character. I thought he was a strong character and he showed his, his worth and whatnot before he passed away. Um, I, I did, you know, I felt a little inside when that when that child came up to her and became the new heir, because first of all, I thought, OK, I feel bad for the original parents who now they lost their child because he's the new heir of the queen. But I think she had said something like, you know, the parents are still going to be the parents, but he's going to be the heir. So like okay. second parents. But I thought that was an awesome scene because you see in other movies and other TV shows I've never experienced in my life. So I'm not going to try. But in other TV shows, other movies, other documentaries, when um, a mother loses a child they sometimes have that inert um, instinct to be motherly to other children, not to take them and not to steal them, but right. to just to be motherly and want to take care of others. And so when that child came up, held his hand, held her hand, and she just felt that love, I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just so many good things about this movie. I did not think I was going to like it as much as I did based off of the trailer. I'll tell you one thing. There's uh, – I think me and Jody reacted to the trailer because we had made a lot or we made a comment about how she was carrying the baby behind her as she was fighting. Right. And Jody had made some comment about, wow, that's kind of crazy. And there was a lot of uh, comments about that comment that she made in response. History shows looking at the history of what we have online that she actually did that. She had her child strapped to her. But according to history, the child was like 10 years old. Can you imagine that lugging around a 10 year old and fighting? And just like what it showed in the movie, it seemed like it wasn't for the entire war. It was for when it needed to, to get him out of there. Right. But I thought, man, that is a mother right there protecting right. her child. Get on my back literally. And I'll get you to safety. Right. It's uh, that was pretty awesome. You know, I remember I grew up in the Bronx, right? And I remember this story of when I was a kid that uh, the Bronx Zoo, like literally, was maybe 10, 15 minutes away from my house. And in the Bronx Zoo, this little kid, toddler, like probably three, four year old, got through the bars and went into the lion in, in, um, habitat. This is before they had all the glass or whatever. And the mom like jumped over, bro, and like bit the lion to protect her young. You hear these stories of parents, you know, there's a car wreck and a mom will like, you know, rip the door off a car or lift up a car or save their child. They get that superhuman strength that, you know, when those maternal instincts kick in, forget about it. They, they, they become superheroes. I do like that they, like you said, there was some thought put into the film because far too often, you know, you want to make a, a female characters and one of the big complaints about the lead heroines is that they're all Mary Sue's. Like, oh, all of a sudden they just, you know, okay, Ray is a good example. Finally, in the end of Star Wars, they explained why she was so powerful, but, you know, she was a Palpatine. The dark side's more powerful. We've established this already. But, <laughs> you know, they show... We have not established this. <laughs> they show the clips of where even as a little... A, a, a toddler, probably six, seven years old, not even a toddler, but I would say like she was probably four or five years old. Dad was out there teaching her how to defend herself with the sword, right? Dad was training her all these years, so that's why she became such a skilled fighter. It wasn't like, oh, she just picked up a, a, a bow and arrow one day and a knife and became such a skilled fighter. Well, it not just that, but down. that holy man, whoever that guy was, he, you know, he blessed her early on. This person's going to be really special. Right. Um, and, you know, he became a second father to her because he had the wealth, he had the means to be able to help her out and right. train her in such a way. And the father understood, you know, that she was destined for better things. So he didn't allow his pride to get in the way, not to mention her mom was gone. So he needed some help anyways. Right. So you're right. She had all those years of training and ability to do this or that. I thought it was super powerful when her husband, before he dies, 
he tells her, I need you to be you. I don't want you to try to be me. I don't want you to be held back or reserved. I need you to be Manu. I need you to be Lakshmi Bai. I need you to go and lead this kingdom in the way it was. And it was it was such a cool little exchange there because even though she was always independent, always powerful, she tried to be that queen role. She tried to be like Mother Queen, want her to be. And then once her husband gave her the blessing, no, no this, this kingdom is going to go down no matter what. You need to do what you can to save it. When she has that interaction with the Mother Queen and the Mother Queen's like, no, you need to shave your head. You need to go to this place. You're a widow now. And she's like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do what's best for, for my my place, my, my city, my country, whatever it was and, and protect my kingdom. And I thought that was really cool. How, again, like you said, a lot of thought put into it. They thought about how we're going to transition from this, this to this, and they were able to do that. And it just makes for a more enjoyable experience. Cause like I said, not everyone's a war film person. Not everyone gets super excited just because there's, you know, heads being chopped off in the middle of it. You need some story. And I'm one of those people. And this, this gave me what I wanted. Right. Um, I'm glad you mentioned the Mother Queen character because it's funny. You know, a lot of people look at her character and be like, oh, you know, she was against uh, 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 Laxmi the entire time. But you got to understand, Laxmi was actually the one that was not conforming to tradition. So in, in, in this case, Mother Queen is just protecting tradition. And, you know, tradition isn't necessarily always right. But at that time, Think about today, like you said, five years ago, you know, there was still a lot of talk about um, uh, lead women in, in films and heroines and, 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 you know, women leaders. Could you imagine back then? You know what I'm saying? It's like, so, so, of course, you know, I could see where Mother Queen was coming from. You know, this is one of those. Um, I had two issues with this movie. One, I hated, absolutely hated the 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 british and I, I and i get it that's what it was meant to do but they didn't really give me a sense of why other than pride why were they so hell bent on taking over this small kingdom why were they so hell bent on taking down this one woman like you know what i mean it was just like the the the, the typical uh, uh uh um uh uh you know mustache twirling bad guy now to be to be fair, if it's historically accurate, you know sometimes people don't need a good reason to do things; they just do them. You know what I mean? And, and you saw that a lot in um, you know World War II with a lot of the people, uh, uh, a lot of the Nazis that worked on those confrontation camps. They're like, look, we were just following orders. You know what I mean? So uh, 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 if for me there was no character building there, so I absolutely did not connect. No, with those but you know I'm going to stop it there right there because you're absolutely right. You have hit the nail on the head because, and it's. You know, it's tough, I think, maybe for you, for me as well, um, definitely for me, maybe for you, it's tough to have this criticism. But I've noticed it in many films where the British are the bad guys, because like you said, historically sound, they were the bad guys, India wanted them out of there. Right. I have noticed that the British casting, the British acting, the British story development for these characters is very minimal. There's not a lot of effort that goes into their characters. And, you know, if you want a movie, in my opinion, a movie to be – as great as it can be, and I know you stand by this, you have to have a flushed out villain. You have to have a villain that we understand their viewpoint, and then we can choose whether we hate them or we don't hate them. It's not enough that these are the guys that are taking over our land and, and doing all these horrible things that they did historically Good. to India for a movie we want to be fleshed out at least that's how i felt and so once again you know the worst actors in this movie are the british actors besides the second guy that came in he was pretty good but the other guy was horrible um like you said no character development the 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 cousin bad guy he was more fleshed out than yeah. these other characters so i'm with you a hundred percent that may upset some of our audience but i mean you got to face it it's the truth it would be nice to have a little more effort put into those bad guys so that right. we care for the good guys even more. Exactly. It could make the story even more compelling. You know what I mean? Where, okay, they're, 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 uh, that there be the, you could look at the British as being formidable as opposed to just a caricature. You know what I mean? And, uh, give it a more serious, you know, put a, a really serious actor behind it that has some acting chops, give them some dialogue. And we know that, that, that Indian can do very, very good villains. I mean, Raman Rakva 2.0, man, you know what I'm saying? Nawaz Siddiqui is just besides himself there. He's one of the, the gnarliest performances I've ever seen, you know what I mean? So give him that kind of uh, uh, of meat to chew down on, so to speak, you know what I mean? Give him that kind of content and, and, and dialogue to 
become a fully uh, fleshed out character and good hate them hate them for oh, but at least give them you know what i mean some substance there my other issue with the film was and i know that this has happened in a few movies whenever there's animals in the scenes you could tell there's a lot of cgi used and i know that they have issues with being able to use animals in certain shots like the tiger at some point it didn't bother me that much but then the horses like you could really tell at some point like okay that's green screen or whatnot and you know i guess we're just gonna have to give it give that a mulligan because if Definitely. the directors are working with so certain restrictions like look i can't even if i wanted to use practical effects and use real animals i can't do it you know what i mean then it is what it is they got to use what they have but to me that always for whatever reason just stands out and, and listen we're not just killing this film for that lion king what was the first thing we said oh man those lions look horrible disney what were you thinking you know what i mean and i just don't think that cgi can fully capture the essence of animals you know what i mean and, 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 and I mean, at least in Lion King, it didn't, and in this film, it didn't either. Um, with that being said, though, I got to say, I love the story. Like, my heart broke at the end when she's like, and I'm thinking, oh, she fell. She And here's the worst part about it. She didn't fall to his sword, okay? And I guess that's by design, but somebody shot her from, like, behind or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, you can't even come take me out yourself. And I'm like, this can't happen. This is how it's going to end. But then she said she had her last uh, 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 opportunity to one-up them, the last opportunity to, to so to speak, to show out to, you know, a, a, a rebel. And she's like, listen, you're not taking my head because I'm just going to just engulf myself in flames. You know what I mean? Like, it was so powerful that moment like i said it took me back to padma Vat. i remember that last scene in padma Vat. watch it with savannah when it was oh man they went willingly look look chills you know what i mean so it, yeah. oh so again i loved her character and i think that they did her so well i can overlook the fact that there wasn't too many other strong characters uh built up in this film but um, yeah, for me, they definitely needed to flesh out some of the other characters, especially the, the 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 British. Let me know why you know why it was so um, uh, uh, vital for them to try to like show up this this woman and take this kingdom. I mean, they've taken all these other kingdoms. Why go through the trouble? You know what I mean? Like like it, it just those things just didn't make sense to me. Yeah, no, I I'm I'm completely on board with you on that one, and and I'm curious as well, and you know. It is what it is. The animals, I've kind of gotten used to it. I thought the tiger looked a lot better than the horses. I thought that was pretty awesome. Even you would think a tiger would be harder to do because of different colors and a horse, they have them basically a like dark brown or whatever. But I, I was really impressed after going back and reading some of the history, which I'm not going to say I'm an expert on. I'm not even close. But I was really impressed with how close some of these um, scenes were or some of these uh, storylines were to the history. She reigned for, I think, like a year at one point and a year a few years later because, you know, she stepped down, lost a palace or whatever. She ends up dying. She was 29 years old when she died. And her the heir, Domador, the second one, her adopted son, I think he was, you know, put into, you know, in command at age 10 or something like that. I mean, it was insane. He um, So that was pretty cool how they stuck to that story. I thought it was really interesting how – with someone that you can look at just if you just looked at the history books and you said, Oh, she only reigned for a few years, spread apart from a few years of each other. She died at age 29. Why are we talking about this woman? She didn't, re she wasn't able to um, deliver on the independence of India, India and all this kind of stuff. This movie was able to, I feel was able to answer that question very well, was able to focus, like you said, where she went out and became a queen of the people and she got to know the issues of the people. Like, this is what's going on. It took me back to Aladdin, right? Where the newest one where Jasmine, you know, she said that her mom said that a queen and a king need to know about their people and what's going on. And that's why she's going around trying to learn about different things. I thought that was that was really cool. But even though she did not achieve success, even though, you know, she's one, she represented one part of India and it failed. And then she went to another kingdom and that one failed too. It's the idea that someone has to light the spark. Someone has to light the match. Someone has to get the idea going and moving forward to be able to make things happen. And it wasn't just that she said, I'm going to attack the British today because I want independence. She was first trying to protect her country the best she knew how. 
Yeah. And I, I just, I really, really like this movie quite a bit. I don't know why, because the trailer was good enough and our reception from the trailer was good and all that kind of stuff. I don't know why, but for some reason I felt like this wasn't going to be a good movie. I have no idea where I got that idea from, but I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, I absolutely loved it. We all have our, our, our biases and you don't like war films, just like I don't like romantic films. I'm not going to walk into a romantic film excited to go watch it. I'll sit through it and watch it. And I may be pleasantly, surpri pleasantly surprised, I should say. But uh, that's more than likely why you're not into war films. And, you know, I remember uh, 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 us having a conversation because people were raving about Dunkirk and you were like, bro, I, I didn't like it. And I was like, you know what? I agree. You know, I thought it was slow. I thought it was boring. And I love Christopher Nolan. But that's just, you know, like you said, some war films work. 1917 was amazing. Dunkirk was not. So it, it, it's just that simple. But with that being said, I'm ready to give this thing a grade. Uh, Nick, you want to go first or you want me to go first? Sure, I'll go. So with understanding my, you know, not loving war films with, and the main reason why that is because I'm a story guy. You don't usually get a lot of story. You get a lot of action, which action is awesome, but I need a lot of story. This one gave me a lot of story. The acting was for the most part, really good. Kungana was a fantastic, um, she played a fantastic character, but like I said, um, another review mentioned it, but there's minor characters. They didn't get a lot of this, the British villains. There just wasn't a lot development there. I even get a lot of development of the cousin or this or that. I would like a little bit more of that. They they tried. They definitely tried. And I, I wanted to get a little more of the Queen of Jonesy. Yes, even if it was a three and a half hour movie, I just wanted a little bit more of Lakshmi of what she was doing. Um, but I liked how they stuck to basically what happened in history. And they, you know, they they added to it for the movie cinema effect. I'm going to give this movie a B plus. And it, it goes from like a B minus because I don't really like war films that much to a B plus because of Kangana. She did a fantastic job. And I did appreciate how the, the story makers of this film, I don't think the script was that strong, but the story makers of this film, they really gave us some reasons to understand a B or C. Um, you know what? I think I have to agree with you. We seldomly actually agree spot on as far as grades are concerned, but I think it's a B plus as well. Um, you know, because of the lack of, uh, uh, of character building of the British and of the cousin and basically of the villains in this story, you know, it could easily be a B minus. But man, I mean, oh, what's the actress's name again who plays um, Laxmi? Kanga I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but Kangana Renault. She is so powerful and she acts with her eyes. There were so many times where just without her saying a word, just by the look in her eyes, the way she was, she was tearing up, you could tell, oh, she's angry or she's hurt. She did a fabulous job. That's the problem, though. She did a fabulous job. She had to carry this film on her back, bro. I love you know that I mean? scene with the blood on her teeth and everything. Oh, right? no, bro, that was wicked. Oh. You know what I mean? And even the fight Ooh. scenes. So, I mean, she literally carried this film on her back. Uh, so I'm with you, B+. Plus. Um, it's our first film watching her, and she did a great job. Uh, I just think, again, the directors uh, uh, didn't fully flush out the other characters. Um, you know, I'm going to just even stop mentioning the CGI thing from now on because we know why that is as far as the animals are concerned and things of that nature. So we're not really going to talk about that. But, uh, yeah, solid B+. Plus, and, and I tell you what, I want to see some more of her acting i love actors who can act without having to say much you know what i mean dude and, and, and that's just their mannerisms again my boy nawaz i don't know how many actual lines he had in robin robin 2.0 but dude just the way his I, he, that's a guy that if you see him walking down the street and you know at nine ten o'clock at night you see that guy coming you're gonna cross the street all right period because he just has that he he's able to convey that menacing uh uh aura about him and you know that's not easy to do if you've got great dialogue a uh, dialect um dialogue i should say written for you it's easy to do but when you don't who's an actor you can think of like that an american actor man that can just would buy his mannerisms you know what i mean convey i mean the easy ones is like a leo or a jack nicholson or a brad pitt i mean walking phoenix especially That's... walking phoenix where he has like the look on his face or whatever but I, i'm with you because 
I, this is not a performance that she's – this is not a role she's going to take that's going to get her a lot of acting awards. But she is – she's very mesmerizing. Now, obviously, she's beautiful, but it's not her beauty that's mesmerizing. It's her whole presence. And she – I can see why she's a superstar. Um, we haven't seen any other films of hers. I know she was in the Queen trailer as the main character in that movie, but I'm with you. She, she's mesmerizing. Yeah, no, I, you know what? You, you you hit the nail on the head. Jack Nicholson, you know what I mean, dude? Dude, if you've ever seen the movie The Departed, that is probably one of the wildest acting. Dude, the Shining. Of, Who gives a better performance in a movie than him in The Shining? I mean, holy cow. And I mean, just like Nawaz, Jack Nicholson isn't a big imposing guy. That guy was, wouldn't be scary, but you could see the crazy on him, you know what I mean? So you're like, I want no parts of this guy. And, and it's hard to do. It's hard to do. But that was a really, really good comp. But anyway, guys, this review ran a little bit long. Uh, again, when, whenever we're watching a movie that's this epic and, and has this kind of backstory, we definitely going to have a lot to talk about and, you know, talk about some of those nuances of the film. Oh, before I forget, how about the score, Nick? The score was absolutely amazing. It, it, it continued going on. Let's give some credit to the score. I mean, it built up that emotion in you. And, and they use the, 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 the music really well in this film you know, to, to convey, you know, the pain and the sorrow. And it was that sad music. The score was amazing. I loved it. Yeah. The score, we don't really mention it too much. The soundtrack is composed by Shankar, Asan Loy, lyrics by Prasoon Joshi. Um, they did a great job and you're right. You, if, with war films, you have to have a powerful score and a good soundtrack to go mix it in. Um, typically with American films, it's just the score. It's not so much the soundtrack. Some people I say, well, what's the difference? For me, at least, the score is the um, the lyricless music that you get. Think of like a Gladiator or a Braveheart or something like that, where it's just those tones. I think of a soundtrack as music that has lyrics in it and whatnot. But anyways, absolutely correct. This film, again, I'm pleasantly surprised. I was very excited. I thought it was going to be kind of a long watch, but I really enjoyed it. We hope you enjoyed our review. Let us know what you think. Let us know how you're doing. And um, don't forget to let us know what else you want us to watch. Looking, What's coming up next is me and Joey will have a review on Fan. That probably already got dropped. If it didn't, it will be coming very soon. And also me and Gabe will be reviewing pretty soon Black Friday, which was our poll winner, um, which does start in a was. I started watching it a little bit. Ooh, he's, in my, he, it's, he's very young. He's a young Nawaz. He plays, I think, a minor character. At least it is so far. I'm about an hour in. Um, but with all that being said, don't forget to check out our other videos. Thank you so much for joining our Patreon if you've done so already. And until next time. We know all things.